precision medicine at the nanoscale, targeting HIV with atomic accuracy. Some battles are too small for the naked eye to see. Imagine a war fought not with tanks and planes, but with particles so small, a million of them could fit on the head of a pin. In this war, the enemy is a virus, HIV, silent, clever, and able to hide inside our very cells. For decades, scientists have fought it with medicines, but these drugs often lose the chase. The virus slips into hiding, waiting for the right moment to attack again. Now, a new set of warriors is joining the fight, machines smaller than dust, built from the stuff of atoms. Nanotechnology could change how we deliver drugs, turning each dose into a precision strike. But how can something so tiny carry hope so big? Can these microscopic tools reach the virus hiding deep inside the body? And what would happen if we could make medicines that go straight to infected cells without harming the healthy ones? Most importantly, could this be the step that makes HIV a thing of the past? The challenge of HIV HIV is a master of disguise. Once inside the body, it attacks the immune system's T cells, the very soldiers meant to protect us. Some of the virus hides in reservoirs inside tissues, like the brain, the gut, or even inside resting immune cells, where normal drugs can't reach. That's why, even with daily medicine, HIV isn't cured. The drugs we have today are powerful, but they must flood the entire body to reach their targets. This can lead to side effects, drug resistance, and missed opportunities when the virus hides away. What is nanotechnology? Nanotechnology means working with materials at the scale of nanometers, one billionth of a meter. To imagine this size, think of a sheet of paper. Now, split its thickness into about 100,000 slices. That's one nanometer. At this scale, we can build structures that act like tiny delivery trucks, carrying medicine directly to where it's needed. These nanocarriers can be made from lipids, polymers, metals, or even proteins. They can be shaped like spheres, rods, or shells, and they can be coated with molecules that guide them to specific cells. In short, they can act like guided missiles against disease. How nanotechnology targets HIV scientists are designing nanocarriers that recognize markers on the surface of HIV-infected cells. Once attached, these carriers release their drug cargo exactly where it's needed. Some can even be engineered to cross the blood-brain barrier, a wall that normally keeps drugs out of the brain, making it possible to target HIV hiding in the nervous system. A key advantage is timing. These particles can release drugs slowly over days or weeks, reducing how often a patient needs to take medicine. Fewer doses mean less chance of missed treatments and less opportunity for the virus to rebound. Who's developing it? Research teams around the world are experimenting with this idea. At the University of North Carolina, scientists have built nanoparticles that deliver antiretroviral drugs directly to immune cells. In India, researchers have created gold-based nanoparticles that act like nanosponges, soaking up HIV proteins. The U.S. National Institutes of Health is funding studies on how nanocarriers could also deliver CRISPR gene editing tools to cut HIV's DNA out of infected cells. Why it works. At its core, nanotechnology works because it changes the rules of delivery. Instead of dumping drugs into the bloodstream and hoping enough reach the target, Nanocarriers are designed to seek out the virus and attack it in place. Think of it as the difference between spraying water over an entire field and using a hose to water only the plants you want. The precision not only improves effectiveness, it also reduces side effects. What's next? There are still challenges. We need to make sure nanocarriers are safe, easy to produce, and affordable. The immune system sometimes attacks nanoparticles before they reach their target, so researchers are testing ways to disguise them as friendly cells. And while lab results are promising, large-scale human trials are needed before nanotechnology can become part of everyday HIV treatment. Still, the vision is clear. One day, instead of taking a daily pill, a person with HIV might get an injection every few months, a shot loaded with billions of microscopic couriers each on a mission to seek and destroy the virus. Closing thought.
taught HIV taught the world how clever a virus can be. Nanotechnology is teaching us how precise science can become. If the two meet in battle, the fight might finally shift in our favor, not with bigger weapons, but with smaller ones. And maybe, in the smallest machines we've ever built, we'll find the power to end one of the biggest epidemics we've ever faced.